You must be able to see it, Mr. Anderson. You must know it by now. You can't win. It's pointless to keep fighting. Why, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why do you persist? Because I choose to. It's so easy to win if you can control your own mind. But it seems that nobody can. And that's how the people who run the world keep the world running. And I don't blame them. But don't be mad when you're laying there in your fucking bed and you're in the fucking hospital and you're 70, 80, 90 years old and you're thinking, Man, I feel like I didn't fucking do something. Because you did. You didn't do it. You didn't do shit. You may live a great life, man, but you're always going to feel empty inside. I don't feel empty. The Bible teaches that your body is an amazing gift from God. Use it well. And your mind is an amazing gift from God. And that's why the Bible goes after laziness as a sin. Because laziness is essentially saying, God, you have given me nothing of significance and importance. Therefore, I can fritter my life away being lazy, not developing my physical talents or my intellectual talents or my spiritual talents, because guess what? It really doesn't matter. And God says, no, you matter. I've given you talents. Now they're dormant, a lot of them, so you gotta develop them, which means you gotta get up off your backside, Cliff, and you gotta start working. You gotta develop your body, you gotta develop your mind, and you gotta develop a relationship with me. Sometimes you're living through the toughest thing ever, and you don't know why it's happening to you. But sometimes, guys, it's bigger than what you can even see right now. Sometimes your son gonna be looking you in the eye and say, Dad, how do I get through this? And then what are you gonna tell him when you quit before? What are you gonna tell him when you took shortcuts? That's the point, man. There's so much stuff that's bigger than you right now that you're going through for a bigger purpose than you can even imagine. We can all change our emotions if we really want to. You could all think yourself sad. You could all think yourself happy. Everyone can do it, but people take too long to do it. You need 10 minutes. Get good at it. Give yourself a few seconds. And then you have to decide which emotion puts me in the most competitive state right now. And you'll often find that happy is not one you choose very often. It's not a competitive emotion to be happy. Oh, I'm happy, then you don't get shit done. I like to feel proud all the time. We're not digging a hole this year. We've dug too many holes. I'm telling you, God has blessed me. And I'm telling you right now, when I reverse engineer it and go, how in the world did I get here? God said, be real with the people. You got to a point in your life where you stop digging holes. Happiness is just a feeling like sadness. Don't act like you feel. No matter in what situation you are right now, stay calm and disciplined. Patience in the right moment is the key. Somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame. Like a big shadow. I mean, how did you get to where you are? You know how to do it. You know exactly how to be you or how to be me. You don't want to do it. And if the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, it's my responsibility. A man is supposed to take care of his family. You live in my house, fill your belly with my food, put you behind on my bed because you're my son. Because I like you, because it's my duty to take care of you. I owe a responsibility to you. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Yeah, I, I am nervous about the situation. Yeah, I am fearful about the situation. But what am I afraid of? And then you kind of unpack it. And then it gives you the ability to look at it for really what it is, which is nothing more than your imagination <laughs> running this course. You know? Now, don't you go through life worrying about whether somebody like you or not. You best be making sure they're doing right by you. You understand what I'm saying? What did you say to the kid? It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit. And keep moving forward. How much you can take. And keep moving forward. Failure is necessary to achieve your dreams. Sometimes it can be frustrating to see that your goal is still miles away, but through mistakes you learn more and more. We remember negative events more than positive ones. This is how we improve. A man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory, by, but, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, you never give up, you pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on! And you don't allow anything to stay between you, God, and your dreams. If you learn that failure is nothing bad, you will think more positive. The biggest mistake is doing the same mistakes over and over again. Making the best move on the chessboard, regardless of how losing your position is, is a life philosophy that most will never understand. Sometimes you look at your position on the board and you're fucked, but still, 
Regardless of how fucked you are, there is still a best move. There's always a best move and a worst move, no matter how bad things are. Many people, when they get to a losing position, think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't have to make the best move anymore. I actually disagree. Maybe nine times out of 10, the best move won't save you, but that one time out of 10, the best move might be just enough to save your ass. And on a long enough time frame, if you play the game repeatedly, day after day, taking risks, always making the best move, regardless of whether you're winning or losing, it will compound into an upward spiral of never-ending success. It doesn't matter how often you fail, as long as you stand up. No matter how frustrating it is, you keep going. God said in Hebrews 13, 5, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, so have some faith. If you don't go out there and give 120%, you're not a man. A man don't always put forth effort and accomplish his goals. As men, we fail too. We don't always do everything perfect, but if you're a real man, you try. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're a real man, you try. I said my, my, my biological father wasn't no real man, not because I'm mad at my man, but he, didn't, he, he wasn't there. I don't care what you believe in. It doesn't matter. I'm not judging anybody. But let's say my thing is God. You get to heaven, I'm 300 pounds, I sit down, I was a cockroach, terminated my whole life, and we're sitting down just like this, you're God and I'm David. Now look at this chart, and on the chart it has all these different things, but my name's on it. But these things aren't me. I was going to change the world, I was going to set records, I was going to be a Navy SEAL, I was going to be honored here, honored there. And I'm like, God, I was, this isn't me. Like it says, David Goggins, I was an Ecolab guy, I sprayed for cockroaches, and I'm 300 pounds, I said, here, I'm 185. And God goes, no, that's who you were supposed to be. My biggest fear in life is that there is a final resting place in this world and there's a final judgment and you talk to something much bigger than you. I don't want to sit down and have a conversation with someone with something that says, you're in heaven, this is what you should have been on earth. Don't be upset by the results you didn't get from the work you did not do. Don't be upset. I don't want you to be upset. I don't want you to be angry. I want you to be like, I didn't get the results because I didn't do the work. The depth of my consciousness causes me to suffer. Is it a blessing or a curse to feel everything so very deeply? And Peterson thought for a moment. And he said, the only way out is through. You take more of the thing that poisons you until you turn it into a tonic that girdles the world around you. I wanted to challenge you to see would you retreat or would you step up to me and fight for the thing that you said you wanted. He said, I just said it to see what you're willing to fight for, what you said you wanted. Like, I'm intrigued in life, how when a person say they want something, or a person say, man, I'm going to have this incredible, phenomenal life, and the only thing it takes is for the circumstance to change. And when the circumstance change, they forget everything that they once spoke, or everything they once spoke now means nothing to them. Right, the words that they spoke about a certain situation. I'm intrigued by that. Right, how a circumstance can take that away. Like, I, I understand this about life. In life, people don't burn out because of what they do. People burn out because life makes them forget why they do. But when the purpose is intact, when the mission is intact, when it's about something greater than themselves, the opposition and adversity and the challenges are a part of the journey. Well, the best mental model is God wants me to learn something here. And he's going to teach me that through suffering. He's going to make this difficult and he's going to make me feel pain. And he's going to make this as hard as he decides it needs to be mm -hmm. so that I can sit here and learn things. Well, you should stop chasing motivation. Watch this. What do you think most people get wrong about motivation? They think it's a permanent fix. They think I need to have this motivation to work out, to study, to be better. So if they don't have it, they just don't fucking do it. So what could be a solution for this, an alternative? You're always going to feel empty until you just admit what you really want. And the beauty of it is you can't believe that these things are owed to you because they're not. The beauty about it is these things must be earned. Now you have a purpose, but what about discipline? There is no fucking life hack. Do it and do it and do it and do it. That's the hack. The hack is gonna fucking suck. And that's what I realized. You have to do something. Raw action solves. So when I was broke, I was never like, ah, I'm poor, I'm poor, what do I do? It was, I'm poor, what must, I have to do something. So what is the conclusion of all this? What could be the reason you are watching this video? If your definition of success is win or lose, giving everything you've got and growing or learning along the way, then you're setting yourself up for success. I really think the biggest cheat code in life is just going after it and not being concerned of whether or not you fail at one specific task. Instead, understanding the big picture, what your long-term goal is, and knowing if you keep driving forward and never fucking quit, in the end you will succeed. So don't fear. Put your trust in God. Don't chase motivation and get disciplined. Find your purpose.
refuse to be a broken man. It's disrespectful to everybody who ever died or tried hard for me to be raised, for me to emerge from this difficulty as a broken person. But that's absolutely not least selfish. I refuse to be called broken. I refuse. Why don't you smile? I do. I do. But I figure something out. That's why I am never, you'll never hear me say I'm missing something. I found it years ago. You find it in the suck. You find it in the suck and you find it repeatedly in the suck to the point where you know exactly who you are. Most people are missing something because they don't know who they are. When I work out really hard, I have respect for myself. Yes. You know, yeah. Um, if you force yourself to do something for that day, I know I'm not a lazy piece of shit. For that day, yep. I know I'm focused. For that day, when I'm done, I'm like, I know who I am. I yeah. get shit done. And the best men are the ones who suffered the most. I wouldn't be top G if I didn't suffer more than anyone else. You're the, you're a better man than everyone else if your life was a mess. Every time something happened to them, they sat there and they looked in the mirror and said, "What can I learn from this? How can I stop this happening?" You want to think that your life is so much harder than somebody else's. It's not. You're lazy. You don't want to put the effort in. You don't want to work at it.